Hello and welcome to InvestorToday.ca. I'm your host, Dave Glover. InvestorToday.ca is brought to you in conjunction with RBL Communications, your online IR professionals. We're coming to you live from the Chicago Resource Expo. It is Saturday, the 28th of April, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Craig Lindsay, who is the CFA and president uh, of... Otis Gold, Otis Gold, which trades on the TSX under the symbol OOO, and also on the OTCQX under the symbol well, OGLDF. Craig, welcome to the show. Great, great to have a chance to talk to you. And I, I don't know if you've done your presentation as yet, but uh, I wish you good luck on that. No, I appreciate that, Dave. Thanks for having me. I'm doing my presentation this afternoon. So, very good. Well, as as those of you who have attended the Chicago Resource Expo know, the presentation is really the big ticket item here at the show. It's not so much getting to meet with the with the uh, exhibitors, but it really is about the presentation. So, first thing I want to ask you, if if you could, is tell us uh, about Otis and specifically your flagship Kilgore project. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so Otis uh, is a gold company. Uh, we're focused in the state of Idaho in the United States. We've got five uh, projects. Uh, we've got uh, 722,000 ounces of 43101 uh, compliant resources uh, spread over two projects, the Kilgore Gold Project, which is our flagship, as well as the Oakley Project, which okay. is a secondary project that we're looking for a joint venture uh, partner on. Well, that sounds great. You know, I, uh, there's a lot of companies out there right now that are looking to do JV, and I think the main reason for that, of course, is the shared uh, shared financial obligation at that point, right? Uh, that's correct. That said, uh, all of our projects we own 100% interest in. Uh, originally, we had a joint venture for us to earn into a 70% interest in, in our Kilgore project. Uh, and about uh, 15 months ago, I was very fortunate in being able to acquire 100% interest in the project and also was able to eliminate a royalty that was on the project. So we now own 100% interest uh, in this claim block, and it has no NSRs on it. It's got a 487,000-ounce resource of what we call the Mine Ridge deposit. Mm -hmm. We've been out there at uh, Kilgore for four years now. We've put down about 20,000 meters of drilling. Uh, we've hit on over 80% of the holes that we've drilled out at Kilgore. This is a, a near surface, uh, open pit, heap leach uh, gold target. Uh, the dimensions out at the Mine Ridge deposit would be about, it's about 800 meters in length, it's about 350 meters wide, and it's shallow. The mineralization is from about 50 meters to 150 meters in depth, and on average it's about 50 meters uh, in thickness. And what's exciting about, uh, for us about the Kilgore Gold Project is that we think it's got two to three million ounce potential out there. At Mine Ridge alone, we have had some very exciting drill results, specifically at the tail end of our 2011 drilling program. Uh, we successfully uh, hit on two holes that were uh, over 100 meters in uh, uh, thickness. One was 114 meters, one was 118 meters, and these holes had a grade of about 0.89 grams per ton, and they started right at surface, so they're really... It's, it's, an exciting uh, time for the Kilgore project because these two uh, holes were followed up with a soil sampling survey that extended the strike length of the uh, mine ridge deposit by about 400 meters and it's entirely open ended up to the northeast and northwest of this mine ridge deposit so there's lots of opportunity to uh, expand on on the resource out of Kilgore. Well, let's touch on the management team if we can and, and perhaps the share structure as well. Sure. Well, uh, from a, a share structure perspective, we've got 50 million uh, shares outstanding on the nose. Uh, management owns about 13% of the shares. Okay. Institutions own between 35 and 40 percent uh, of the shares in the company. The mm -hmm. rest would be have a retail base. We've got about $1.85 million in the bank at March 31st of this year. So we've got some uh, uh, cash in the bank. Uh, probably uh, most importantly um, from a management perspective, what that my, the takeaway would be that my technical team made up the core of the old Echo Bay Mines U.S. Exploration Team, right. specifically uh, two of my partners, Dr. John Carden and Mitch Bernardi, uh, were senior members of the exploration team at Echo Bay. Uh, Dr. Carden was the director of U.S. Exploration for Echo Bay Mines. Uh, Mitch Bernardi was a senior project geologist with, with Echo Bay. And an additional connection between Echo Bay and Otis is that... Uh, the last major operator out of Kilgore was Echo Bay Mines. They uh, drilled out there between 1993 and 1996. And during that time, Mitch Bernardi mm -hmm. uh, 
ran that program for Echo Bay for the drill program for three years. He had a team of up to 25 guys there. So not only do they have this uh, ex experience with uh, a major, that being Echo Bay, they also had a very, very good uh, understanding of the geology that we're dealing with out right. at, at uh, the Kilgore Project. Well, it sounds to me like you've got a really strong team there. Investors, you're, you're going to want to pay attention to Otis. Uh, next question I'd like to ask you, you mentioned you're down in Idaho. Can you tell us a little bit about what mining is like uh, in Idaho? What is it? Yeah, there's uh, a lot of activity in the mining sector in Idaho. Uh, specifically, your uh, listeners may be very aware of the, the Silver Valley, which is up in the Idaho Panhandle. Okay. Very high-grade underground uh, silver mine operations. Uh, in the southeastern part of the state, there's very large open-pit phosphate mines southeast of the town of Pocatello. Uh, majors such as Agrium uh, are active in Idaho today. Uh, from a base metal perspective, Idaho is home to, I think, the world's largest open pit molly mine, that being the Thompson Creek mine. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ongoing uh, activity in the mining sector. It's an important part of the, uh, the, the, the state's economy. Uh, from a gold perspective, while there's no current gold production today, there's a long history of placer mining, of open pit mining for gold, as well as underground uh, mining mm -hmm. for gold. And today, there would be about eight juniors, uh, such such as uh, Otis, that are actively developing gold projects towards production in, in, in the state of Idaho. So really a lot going on, and uh, the, the, the permitting authorities in Idaho have been very favorable, and the state certainly very supportive of, of what we're doing, and I think you're going to see a lot more uh, attention put on, on the state as we mm -hmm. continue to, to develop projects there. Well, as you mentioned, there are a lot of companies doing exploration in that area. But what specifically differentiates Kilgore from some of these other gold projects? Well, uh, probably some of the key differentiators is that we own 100% of this project, number mm -hmm. one. There's no royalties on it. Uh, number two, it's an open pit target. It's, very, uh, it's a near surface target. Um, one of the key things that differentiates us from our competitors uh, is that the metallurgy at the Kilgore project is extremely good. This is a volcanic coasted epithermal gold system. Mm -hmm. It's a quartz agillaria system. It may not mean much to non technical people, but basically, the majority of the ore at Kilgore is hosted in oxide material and it's very amenable to uh, leaching. Uh, by using cyanide. In fact, the cyanide consumption when you're uh, leaching uh, the ore at Kilgore is very low. Uh, and that is a key part of any mining project. Right. A lot of companies that are out doing uh, development work on projects, they may do a lot of drilling, they may come up with big holes, they may come up with resources, but if they haven't done any metallurgical testing, it's generally because there might be challenges with right. that metallurgy, and that's a major differentiating factor at uh, Kilgore, the fact that we, we our metallurgy is really extremely, extremely good. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about infrastructure now, if we can, at Kilgore, and, and uh, what, what makes that a, a huge plus for you guys? Well, it's a, it, we benefit from what many projects in the United States uh, are blessed with uh, from an infrastructure per perspective. Specifically, you can drive a two-wheel drive vehicle right up to our drill site today at the Mine Ridge deposit. Uh, there's a railhead 15 miles away. There's a major north-south interstate, Interstate 15. Uh, mm -hmm. That's 15 miles away. We have power to the bottom of the hill, uh, and there's uh, plenty of water, which is... Right. very important for both our drilling activities as well as obviously for future processing activities. Well, can we talk about permitting and what the environment is like at Kilgore for, for permitting? You alluded to it a little bit earlier there. Sure. Well, when it's a, a really important part of any deposit. I mean, you can get the biggest deposit in the world with the greatest metallurgy mm -hmm. uh, and, and super economics, but if you can't get it permitted, you really you really have nothing. So when we started to invest a, a significant amount of money in this project, one of the first things we did was we hired a company called Golder Associates to go out and do an environmental scoping study mm -hmm. and basically answer the question, are there any material impediments to permitting an open pit heat leach operation at Kilgore? And uh, they came back with a, a very favorable and clean bill of health saying that there are no material impediments. Uh, some of the benefits specifically that we have at Kilgore that support this, uh, there's no endangered species in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, all of the drainage on the property is internal, and what water does come out at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. drains into something called Camus Creek. And the relevance of Camus Creek is that Camus Creek doesn't be, it's not a tributary of a larger salmon bearing stream or river, mm -hmm. which creates a lot of challenges from a, a, a permitting perspective. Uh, we're out of the view shed of any national parks, uh, which right. is very, very uh, important. So for those reasons, we think you know, we're very, very comfortable with the permitting regime. Something else that I would mention uh, is that all of the drill permits that uh, we have turned around at Kilgore, uh, have been turned around in six weeks or less, which is very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, uh, so that's been a real benefit to our operations out there, that we have a very good relationship uh, with the Forest Service, who is our uh, permitting authority. And mm -hmm. they do a great job. They're extremely thorough, uh, but they're also very attentive to, to us, and they've been very good, good folks to work with. In well, that's Iowa. awesome. Well, I've been talking to Craig Lindsay. He is the president of Otis Gold, which trades on the TSX under the symbol OOO, and on the OTCQX under OGLDF. As always, I'd like to give my guests the last word. Maybe you want to make a, a case for investing in, in Otis. Sure. Well, thank you. A um, uh, couple of things, I guess. We're, we're trading at the very bottom end of our valuation range. Uh, number two, uh, we've had a very good track record of success with our drilling, hitting on 80% of our holes. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, our, the Kilgore project itself is growing uh, rapidly. We're really starting to add ounces to it. Um, the metallurgy is, is extremely attractive out there. The e economics on the project are starting to look very, very good. And our geologists are probably more excited today about the mm -hmm. prospects uh, for Kilgore than they have been at any time in the four years since we've had an interest in the project. So it's a really exciting time uh, for Kilgore and, if, and for Otis. And if you believe in the gold market uh, and you believe in the, the potential for it and you believe that junior gold companies are going to start to come up mm -hmm. uh, closer uh, in line with uh, where the price of gold is today and where it's going in the future, certainly Otis op, uh, offers a pretty uh, compelling uh, investment opportunity. For Absolutely. Investors. Well, it's another one of those situations, viewers, where we have a strong project, strong management team, and as a result, generally, you're going to get a strong investment. As uh, as Craig alluded to, they are at the lower end of their uh, of their valuation, so it's probably just a wonderful opportunity to look at Otis, look at what they're doing, and maybe think about parking some of your money with Otis. Again, it's Otis Gold Corp trading on the TSX under the symbol OOO on the OTC QX under OGLDF. I'm Dave Glover. This is InvestorToday.ca. We'll see you next time.